Well, Cadillac has for most of the years in our 113 year heritage been a very US centric brand. And uh, I think it's time that as we reinvent the brand, we, we, we shake off that um, uh, US only focus. We want to take the brand global. Um, we want to dramatically expand our product line and so we have to take a global view to generate the volumes, to justify the investments and in all the fascinating new products we want to create. Uh, but at the same time, we need to have a very disciplined approach to the business. We need to grow only on a way that is sustainable. So you cannot buy market share in the luxury business. So it's quite an extraordinary challenge to grow the brand and expand the volume footprint while also obviously uh, uh, raising transaction prices and avoiding incentives so that you really build brand power. And uh, in the space of a relatively short period of time, uh, we've been able to achieve that. We've got global sales growth this year and overall improvement in, in the quality of the business. And Cadillac is making a very significant contribution to the overall profitability of General Motors. And so while our ambitions still take us much higher, we are very happy with the progress we're making. The market segment into which we are launching this car is right now uh, not only the fastest growing in the luxury market, uh, it also is very, very large. The vehicle that um, is being replaced by, by, by uh, the XT5, the SRX, um, is achieving its highest sales in its entire life cycle right in its final year of production, which is quite unusual. And it just reflects the absolutely red hot nature of this market segment. And as we introduce XT5 now, with a far higher degree of sophistication, of craftsmanship, quality of execution, um, and, uh, and product substance. It means that uh, we really have a very compelling and highly competitive uh, uh, entry, and we anticipate a significant increase in our segment share. And as SRX already is the, the, the highest selling model in the Cadillac lineup, you can begin to see when you add all these things up the role that this car is going to play in expanding our customer base. Yeah, I think um, probably the right way to start answering that question is to understand why we're embarking on this mission. The luxury market globally accounts for about 10% of automotive sales, but the luxury segment generates almost half of the total profit pool in the industry. General Motors is a titan corporation. It commands around 11.5% of the global automotive share, but Cadillac, its luxury arm, only enjoys around 3.5% of overall luxury share and so it's clear that General Motors is not getting its rightful part of that profit pool. This is why there is a significant investment going into Cadillac the brand and our product portfolio and also why we're entering new geographies uh, because growing markets like China and in the longer term obviously the important markets in the Middle East in Russia and Europe are, are markets that must be cultivated. There's a lot of potential there we have a powerful brand and uh, as we execute the strategy, this will spearhead another strong revenue stream for the corporation so that we can diversify our, our profit uh, sources and uh, ensure that uh, the company continues to prosper. So I think um, this is something that uh, might startle people, but the reality is that five short years from now, four out of every five luxury cars are going to be bought by people who are either from Gen X or the millennial demographic group. This represents a landscape shift from the baby boomers who've dominated buying power in the segment until now. And brands that ignore this demographic shift will become marginalized. Um, we know that the younger generation have a different view also of what constitutes luxury. We know that they are more orientated to what one might describe as a, as, a, as a more progressive contemporary expression of luxury. And this has to be reflected not only in our brand positioning and marketing communication tone and manner, but also in the way we execute the products. At the same time, um, while they have very exacting demands in terms of sophistication and quality and technology, the price points at which they're able to access cars is not the same as the baby boomer generation. They, after all, still have to accumulate some, some, uh, some resources, yeah. right? And this is also driving this trend towards smaller, more compact luxury cars so that the price points are more accessible. And uh, this forms a very important element of our future product strategy at Cadillac as well.